Hello and welcome to this video, where we will explore the lives and messages of four prophets in the Bible who never wrote a book. These prophets are sometimes overlooked, but they played important roles in God's plan and history. They spoke God's word boldly and faithfully, even when it was dangerous or unpopular. They also performed amazing miracles and witnessed God's power and judgment. Let's find out who they are and what they did, the first prophet we will talk about is Elijah. Elijah was one of the most powerful and influential prophets in Israel's history. He lived during the reign of King Ahab and his wicked wife Jezebel, who led the people astray into the worship of Baal and Asherah, the false gods of the Canaanites. Elijah confronted them and challenged their authority, and proved that the Lord is the only true God. Point one of the most famous stories about Elijah is when he faced the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel. He proposed a contest to see which God would answer by fire. He and the prophets of Baal each prepared a bull as a sacrifice, and called on their God to send fire from heaven. The prophets of Baal cried out, danced, and cut themselves, but nothing happened. Elijah mocked them and said, maybe your God is sleeping or busy. Then Elijah prayed to the Lord, and fire came down and consumed the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the water. The people saw this and fell on their faces, saying, the Lord, he is God. Elijah then ordered the people to seize and kill the prophets of Baal. Elijah also performed many other miracles, such as calling down fire from heaven to destroy the soldiers who came to arrest him, raising a widow's son from the dead, and bringing drought and rain according to God's word. He also prophesied the downfall of Ahab's dynasty, and how his dogs would lick his blood, and how his wife Jezebel would be eaten by dogs. All these things came true Elijah was so faithful to God that he did not die, but was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind, with a chariot of fire and horses of fire. He was one of the two people in the Bible who did not see death, the other being Enoch. Elijah's story is told in 1 Kings 17 to 2 Kings 2. The second prophet we will talk about is Elisha. Elisha was the successor of Elijah, who received a double portion of his spirit. He continued Elijah's ministry of confronting the kings of Israel and Judah, and performing miracles. He was known as the man of God, and the people respected and feared him. Point one of the most famous stories about Elisha is when he healed Naaman, the commander of the Syrian army, from leprosy. Naaman was a great and honorable man, but he had leprosy, a skin disease that made him unclean and isolated. He heard that there was a prophet in Israel who could cure him, so he went to see him with gifts and letters from his king. But Elisha did not even come out to meet him, but sent a messenger to tell him to wash in the Jordan River seven times. Naaman was angry and offended, and said, Are not the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? He was about to leave, but his servants persuaded him to try it. He did as Elisha said, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. He was healed and he praised God. He also offered gifts to Elisha, but Elisha refused to take anything from him. Elisha also performed many other miracles, such as multiplying oil and bread for the needy, making an iron axe head float, blinding and capturing an enemy army, and restoring life to a dead boy. He also prophesied the end of the famine in Samaria, the death of Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, and the reign of Jehu, who would destroy Ahab's descendants. He also had a miraculous death, as his bones revived a man who was thrown into his grave. Elisha's story is told in 2 Kings 2-13. The third prophet we will talk about is Nathan. Nathan was a prophet during the reign of David, who was a friend and advisor to the king. He delivered God's promise to David that his throne would be established forever, and that his son would build a temple for God. He also rebuked David for his sin with Bathsheba and Uriah, and pronounced God's judgment on him. Point one of the most famous stories about Nathan is when he confronted David for his adultery and murder. David had seen Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, one of his loyal soldiers, and desired her. He slept with her and got her pregnant. He then tried to cover up his sin by sending Uriah to the front lines of the battle, where he was killed. David then took Bathsheba as his wife, and thought he had gotten away with it. But God saw his sin and sent Nathan to him. Nathan told him a parable about a rich man who had many sheep and a poor man who had only one lamb. The rich man took the poor man's lamb and killed it for his guest. David was angry and said, the man who did this deserves to die. Nathan then said, you are the man. He exposed David's sin and told him that God would punish him. David was convicted and confessed his sin, and Nathan told him that God had forgiven him, but he would still suffer the consequences of his sin. His child with Bathsheba would die, and his own son would rebel against him and take his wives. Nathan also helped Solomon to become king after David's death, and wrote some accounts of David's reign. His story is told in 2 Samuel 7 to 12, 1 Kings 1, 1 Chronicles 17, 2 Chronicles 9 29. The fourth and final prophet we will talk about is Micaiah. 
Micaiah was a prophet during the reign of Ahab, who was faithful to God and spoke the truth, even when it was unpopular. He opposed the false prophets who encouraged Ahab to go to war against Ramoth Gilead. He revealed that God had sent a lying spirit to deceive Ahab, and that he would die in battle. Point one of the most famous stories about Micaiah is when he stood alone against the false prophets. Ahab, the king of Israel, and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, wanted to go to war against Ramoth Gilead, a city that belonged to Israel but was occupied by Syria. They asked the prophets for advice, and four hundred of them said, Go up, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. But Jehoshaphat was not satisfied, and asked if there was another prophet of the Lord. Ahab said, There is still one man, Micaiah the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. They sent for Micaiah, and the messenger told him to agree with the other prophets. But Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. When he came to the kings, he sarcastically said, Go and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. But Ahab knew he was lying, and said, How many times shall I make you swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then Micaiah said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains, as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. He also said, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by, on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will persuade Ahab to go up, that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So one spoke in this manner, and another spoke in that manner. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. The Lord said to him, In what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, You shall persuade him, and also prevail. Go out and do so. Therefore look. The Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. The false prophets were angry and accused Micaiah of lying. One of them, Zedekiah, slapped him on the cheek and said, Which way did the spirit from the Lord go from me to speak to you? Micaiah said, Indeed, you shall see on that day when you go into an inner chamber to hide. Ahab then ordered Micaiah to be imprisoned and fed with bread and water until he returned in peace. Micaiah said, If you ever return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. He also said to the people, Take heed, all you people. Ahab and Jehoshaphat went to war, and Ahab disguised himself, but a random arrow struck him and wounded him. He died in his chariot, and his blood was licked by the dogs, as Elijah had prophesied. Micaiah's words came true, and he was vindicated as a true, 